Hey, hello, and welcome to the show. It's me, JP, and it's time for another episode of JP's Product Pick of the Week, or JP Papow, as I call it, to myself. No one really wants to join in on that. Uh, but you're welcome to, and let's do this. So first of all, hey, everybody, thanks for stopping by to the show. I see we've got some good people over in uh, YouTube and on our Twitch and over in Discord. That's where the chat's happening. If you're wondering who I'm talking to, mostly it's, well, sometimes myself, but also Lars and the good people over on Discord. So if you're interested in checking that out, head on over to adafru.it slash Discord, and you can jump in on the chat. It's 24 seven hackerspace that you could bring your grandchild to. I'm paraphrasing. Uh, let's see. Uh, hey, Hugo Dahl over in YouTube. Thanks for coming by. Let's get on with the show, shall we? So I've got a very cool, also very hot product pick this week. Is that enough of a hint? Uh, let's head on over, in fact, to the product page. You want to go there if you want to get a discount because we have 50% off right now during the show. This is the product itself. Let's, uh, let's jump over to the web page. There it is. If you head to that URL or that barcode, that'll take you to the product page. And if I refresh that right before our very eyes, you will see it has just halved in price. That's a great price on this. And you'll also notice that we've got our video. You can watch it from right inside the product page. Why don't you do that? Jump in there and watch. All right, that may have told you too much already, but what I'm going to do now is ask Mrs. Lady Ada of the past to uh, jump back in time and introduce the product. It's the TMP117, a precision temperature sensor. Uh, you know, we've actually had some people say, oh, I want a very high precision, high accuracy temperature sensor that works at a very wide range. This works from like negative 55 to 150 degrees. You can get the 0.1 degree C uh, typical accuracy between 0 and 85 C. Once you get to like negative 55 or 150, it goes down to like, and still shockingly good 0.3 or so, or 0.4% um, degrees centigrade. Um, but a lovely little sensor. Uh, we even have a little cutout, so it has a very fast uh, reactivity. Um, it's I squared C, it has interrupts, it has thresholds, it has like a built-in EEPROM, it has um, like, it has the ability to do like NIST, uh, uh, traceability because you can like track it by its unique identifier. Um, it's just a great like if you want like the really like the best temperature sensor, um, this is it. So this is an earlier prototype I had that's purple. That's from Oshpark. Uh, so that's why it's purple and the one in the store is black. But it's the same sensor, and the little cutout that's in the center um, means that it doesn't. The, it, you don't have the um, thermal resistance of the board affecting it, so <coughs> it, it's very fast to react. So you can see. Um, it's quite sensitive. I think it's a 16-bit sensor, so you get like 0 0.0087 degrees C uh, per bit. And I put my finger on it, and you see it heats up pretty quickly. Um, it's not going to get to, a four, of course, a uh, full 100 degrees um, Fahrenheit because my skin isn't as hot because it's a little cool in here. But um, it does heat up, and then when I let go, uh, the temperature starts falling pretty quickly as well. So a very fast sensor, it goes over I squared C. You can put up to four of them on one I squared C bus by changing the addressing. It's a little expensive um, compared to low cost temperature sensors like the PCT 2075, but you're not gonna get anything with better precision or accuracy. Like this is it. I couldn't find anything that's better with I squared C than this sensor. This is, this is the cream of the crop, as they say. So um, for those who, who need it, you want it, this is the best temperature sensor you can get. And it's STEMI QT, so you just plug it. Like I've got it plugged into my uh, OLED feather here. It's plug and play, really easy to use. And we have, as you might expect, both Arduino and Python and CircuitPython code. So you can use it with your Uno or your Raspberry Pi or your Feather and for can, whatever you like. It's what we do. It's what we do. All right, well, you know what? I should go grab one myself so we can do a demo. So let me head on over to my mystery cabinet. Would you uh, hold on one second while I do that?
Ah, yes. So there it is. That's the product pick of the week. It's the TMP-117. It's a high accuracy, high precision temperature sensor in I squared C using the Stemma QT connectors. And uh, what I wanted to do is actually, let's jump back over to the product page for a second. I showed you this earlier and you might be watching the show from inside of here. So maybe you're one step ahead of me. Uh, and so there you can see it's normally $11.50. US right now it is $5.75. Uh, you can check out some of the stats uh, here, some of the specifications on this Texas Instruments based uh, chip. And if we scroll down, you can always get to the learn guide for the product. So if we click on this uh, link here, we, we come to the learn guide. So the learn guide, uh, among other things, will tell you the pin out. It's also gonna give you info on setting this up to run either in Arduino or inside of CircuitPython. And by the way, we usually also say Python and CircuitPython because you can run that on a Linux machine using uh, the Python uh, Blinka so it's not just on microcontrollers. And uh, then if you click on the downloads link, that'll take you to the, uh, you can get to the data sheet from here. So this gives us the features, tells you again the accuracy that you get at the different temperature ranges. Uh, it's operating range, uh, power consumption, resolution, uh, supply voltage is in there. And I always like to check this out. This is the applications that Texas Instruments had in mind with this sensor. And those are electronic thermometers, wireless environmental sensors, thermostats, automotive test equipment, wearable fitness and activity monitors, cold chain asset tracking to make sure your fish are fresh, I guess, gas meter and heat meter, as well as temperature transmitters. So what I wanted to do is set it up in a little demo and take a look at how it works, as well as the code. So... If we jump to my down shooter here, you can see I've got a nice little setup here where I have a clue uh, set up. Let me move my camera a little bit. Uh, I have a clue set up and I've got the sensor right here, the TMP-117. Uh, you know what, I think this, let me fix this view. I think it got weird and, and it's uh, extra zoomed. Let me see. Yeah, that's at 150%. How about we do that? Yeah, that's a little better and uh, now I can get physically closer and that looks pretty sharp. So let's take a look here. Uh, you can see we've got the uh, sensor right in the middle there. Oh, I got some, I think I got some peanut butter on there. <laughs> I was, I'll tell you why. Huh, yeah. I grabbed one of these freezer packs from our, from our freezer and I think it has some, some sort of food on there, whoops. Uh, and so the reason I grabbed this freezer pack is you can see right here in the center of the sensor is, or of the breakout board is the sensor itself. And you can see it's got that little cutout there to lower the thermal mass around it so it doesn't hang on to temperatures as long. Uh, and you probably want some air under it too. I have it sort of stuck to my uh, desk here. But what I'm going to do is if you watch that display there and I set my little ice pack on here, uh, we should see that start to drop pretty rapidly. So you can see it's, it's very responsive. Uh, it's dropping down. I'm not going to get it all the way down to, to its temperature, but that's enough so that we can now see a change from both ambient temperature. It was at like around 70 Fahrenheit. Uh, and now I'm going to touch it and press my finger up against that there. And we should see that climb pretty rapidly. So now we're going up to 70, 72. So now it's gonna get, I think, a little warmer than ambient. My skin temperature on my fingertips should be a little warmer than ambient. Um, and you can also do some ill-advised things like stick it in your mouth, which I'm gonna do now just for science. Um, so you can watch this display here and I'll, you can imagine me sticking this in my mouth. You shouldn't do this. Okay, it's definitely warmer inside of me than outside of me. So that's science in action. That's a science fact that you can take to the bank. Um, so why don't we take a look at the code that's running on here? So I'll jump to uh, a little uh, code session. So this is inside of CircuitPython. And I'm just looking at this in my text editor. Let me 
to double check you can see that pretty well. Yeah, not bad. So here's how it works. I'm importing some libraries at the beginning, including time so that we can pause. I can use the sleep function there. And uh, board for the pin definitions, bus IO so I can use I squared C. The Adafruit TMP117 sensor itself, I grab that library, as well as some stuff related to displaying on the clue. So I'm using terminal IO font, display IO, and the display text label. So I import all that stuff. I create the I squared C bus. And then we're running the temperature sensor on that bus. We instantiate it here. Do some clue board setup stuff for printing text. And then we jump all the way to the bottom where the, uh, the key thing is. This is what happens right here. I'm printing to the screen. You can also just print to the serial monitor here with a regular print statement. The TMP117 dot temperature. That's going to return the temperature in Celsius. We're formatting it to a couple of decimal places here, but it can be more precise than that. And then I'm doing a little conversion here to turn it into Fahrenheit, just because that's what I use, and I, and I understand that a little more intuitively than centigrade, or Celsius, rather. Uh, so we can see now, oh yeah, so actually the ambient, uh, yeah, okay, so my skin temperature here is about 80, a little more than ambient, but yeah, ambient's pretty warm in here right now. It's getting, getting toasty in Southern California. Um, and I did do a little bit of a conversion also, just so I could understand it a little better, of the temperature ranges in Fahrenheit. So the accuracy is 0.1 degree Celsius uh, at negative 20 to 50, and that is actually negative four Fahrenheit to 122. And then the different ranges uh, go for negative 40 to 158, negative 40 to 212, negative 67 to 257, and negative 67 to 302 Fahrenheit, and that has about 0.3 degree accuracy Celsius. I forgot to uh, convert that part to, to Fahrenheit, but you can do the math on those. Uh, and you can see this has a really nice wide range, so it's useful. You don't have to decide, hey, I just want to get a body temperature monitor and only use it for those projects, and then a different one for some barbecue project where you're smoking meats or something. This will this will cover a really wide range, uh, up to 302 degrees Fahrenheit, all the way down to negative 40. No, negative, sorry, negative 67. Uh, so that should do it for you. I know there's a lot of people who uh, enjoy using this, this particular temperature sensor in their projects. We got some people over in the chat who mentioned it. Um, you can also, yeah, you can use it for measuring the peanut butter and jelly temperature as well as Nutella. It works great for that. Um, and I think that's, yeah, that's most of the comments that we have in there. So uh, jump on in if you want to add to that or if you have questions or if there's particular projects you've used that this uh, sensor for, I'm interested to hear it. Other than that, again, we'll remind you, you'll want to head on over to the web page right now, to the product page. This is it right here. It's product 4821. So you can always go to an Adafruit product, by the way, uh, if you know the product number, you can get there pretty quickly. You can type that in in Adafruit search. You can also do adafruit.it slash and then the product number, or you can do the full URL, which is adafruit.com slash product slash product number. Uh, and, uh, yeah, Phil, Phil asks about the, the range in Celsius or centigrade, which is it? Celsius. Uh, and it's a negative 55 to 150 is where the accuracy ranges are mentioned. If we look at the data sheet, uh, it actually says operating temperature range is, yeah, negative 55 to positive 150. So not, not as high as, as Phil was asking. Um, but Phil, you've used it in some projects, I think, so you should, you should tell us about your experiences with that. Uh, yes, so as I was saying, go to the product page. You're going to find it there for half price. Like Lady Ada said, this is an expensive sensor because it's very fast and it's very accurate. So it's, it's not a cheapo one, but right now we've got it at half price. So if you were thinking of getting one or two or five or ten of them, you can do that. That's the limit right now uh, on this deal. So if you want to get this deal slash steal... 50% off, then you can get up to 10 of them and uh, fill up your cart with temperature sensors, why don't you? So that is going to do it for today. Um, I'll mention again, ooh, let me get my little extra me out of there. That's our product pick of the week. It's the TMP117 high accuracy, high precision temperature sensor. Get that on my QT wall of goodness, and I'll say goodbye. So thank you, everyone, for stopping by, and I will see you next week on JP's Product Pick of the Week. Bye-bye.